and welcome to this edition of the ASIC Member Spotlight. My name is Michelle Jerry. I'm the ASIC Communications Officer. Today we get a chance to speak to Winky Money, Executive Director at Bila Bis Africa, on how they are creating sustainable ventures through impact measurement. Stay tuned. Welcome, Wing. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for this opportunity, Michelle. Most welcome. We're glad to have you. So I'd like to start off by asking, briefly give us a background of Bila Bis Africa and your role in the company. Great. Um, B-Lab East Africa um, started in 2017 in Kenya. Um, We were covering the East African territory only. We also had a market builder partner in South Africa. Um, In 2018, we embraced the South Africa market builder partner. And so right now we cover East and Southern Africa. So the organization's purpose really is to change the mindset of business here on the continent. So um, capitalism has had its foothold in business everywhere globally for a long time. And what we are trying to do is to champion a better way of doing business where the focus is not only on the profit that is made at the end of the day or at the end of the year, um, but the involvement of all your stakeholders, so considering all the stakeholders in the business. And so we define stakeholders as five different areas. Um, The workers, um, who you employ, the community in which you work, the environment that is affected by your presence, the customers who are receiving your goods and services, and lastly, the governance of your business. And governance is just to ensure continuity of the business. So we've seen a great growth in businesses that are stepping forward to use our tools to measure their impact and manage their operations for more efficiency. And we are also seeing a greater interest in certified B Corps, which is growing across the continent. Oh, that's lovely. And how many consultants and employees do you work with within your team? So right now we have a small team of four um and it covers different areas the the important thing to note though is that whilst we champion um, certification and the use of our tools by businesses the certification aspect is done by an independent third party so this is not something that our employees do we have a chinese wall that separates that so that there is no bias Um, We are also able to benefit from a program that we call our Be Leaders program, where we we train individual sustainability consultants or development consultants on how to support businesses through the path to certification. So we have about five um, Be Leaders who are trained consultants who are allowed to provide this service and keep the revenue. Thank you so much. And you talk about the services you offer. Please, could you go in depth, even as you just mentioned about B Corp certification? Certainly. Um, So our main flagship tool is what we are calling the B Impact Assessment Tool or the BIA. You will hear me refer to it as the BIA. This is a free tool that you can get online. So if you are a business anywhere from one year old or even from registration, all the way to no matter your size, um, what the tool does is it helps you measure your impact across those five areas that I mentioned earlier. So you can log in to uh, www.b-labafrica.net and then go to the section for tools. You will see our, our B Impact Assessment tool. Um, And then you just log in, create an account. If you have different departments, you can create, uh, you can bring in like department heads, up to five of them, and then you go through the questions. So really, it's measuring your social and environmental impact um, across those five different areas. So if you're a business who wants to see what your progress has been, maybe from the time you registered, or if you just want to set up as an efficient business from the first day, 
That tool will provide guidance because it takes you through different sections. It asks you specific questions about your, your strategy, about um, your policies concerning the various areas, whether it's anti-corruption, whether it's anti-bribery, whether it is employee benefits for leave days, whether it is um, recycling your products or waste management. So in all those sections, you will find different questions. And it is a unique tool in that it adjusts, the questions adjust to your company size and your industry. And when you answer one question, it opens up other relevant questions. So that's our flagship tool. We use that for training businesses um, on various areas. So for example, right now we have a project with World University Service of Canada and our partners with Ziki Source and Bloom Life Resources, where we are training businesses on how to incorporate persons with disabilities and youth into their business. So what are the things that a business needs to do to meet the criteria that are laid out in our workers section? Um, prior to that, last year we did um, training for women in business on financial literacy and we did that in partnership with the International Foundation. We were able to take over 70 women through this program and train them on how to create reserve funds, how to manage cash flows, how to budget and all these trainings come with a coaching session which is a one-on-one -on -one session that ensures um, implementation. So we use the BIA as a backdrop to create programs that SMEs will benefit from and large corporations. That's one of the tools. The other tool that we have, which we launched in 2020 in partnership with the UNGC, is the SDG Action Manager. And this really hones in on the 17 SDGs, yeah. right? So there's been a lot of talk around SDGs for business, SDGs for government, but there are questions around how a, a business can plug in. So what this tool does is it allows a business to come in and login, it's also a free tool. You identify the SDGs that resonate most with your business. So for example, if you are a business in education yes. sector, yeah. you will pick the SDG for basic education. You might even pick poverty alleviation. It will ask you specific questions around the SDGs that you pick and also about your business so that at the end of the day, you will set specific goals to say by this year i want to have accom accomplished one two three and so you now have a blueprint that you can share with your organization in order to achieve that particular sdg uh, i have a question in that <laughs> sorry <laughs> because um i'm thinking so is this like once they align themselves with those sdgs is it a csr activity or it is actually even an activity they take upon themselves like they diversify their objectives to incorporate that sdg and to make it a part of how the organization runs that's a great question. So at B-Lab, although we cherish CSR projects, yeah. we actually champion a way of doing business where your impact is embedded in your day-to-day -day operation. So we call that impact-driven business models. Mm -hmm. So we don't want something that, for example, a manufacturing organization will use whatever materials they want, then they dispose of their wastes. Uh, irresponsibly and then turn around and do CSR projects to clean up their waste or to give back to the community. Meanwhile, they as a business are not um, embodying yeah. sustainability, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So what we champion is to say, embed it in your day-to-day -day operations, right? So that by virtue of operating, you're being a sustainable business. By virtue of operating, you're having a positive impact. Don't use CSR to come back and fix the things that you have spoiled while in your normal course of business. Thank you so much for that. And now I want to go to the next question. What are the benefits of measuring impact and why do, sorry, it's two questions, but why do many companies overlook measuring impact? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, um, I would say that firstly, businesses uh, operating with a specific purpose, right? So no one comes into business saying, I'm not thinking about the future, what happens when the trees are all gone? I'm not planting any trees, isn't yeah. it? So no, no business wants to kill themselves. But the challenge has been, there hasn't been tools 
that businesses can readily use to measure their impact. Yeah. We always say that you measure what matters to you, yeah. right? So if it matters to you, you will measure it. So if you want to, I mean, it doesn't necessarily even mean that you have to be a social enterprise. Yeah. It just means that um, you have taken the intention to be mindful of the way you operate as a business. So it's the same way businesses um, send customer surveys yeah. so that they can receive feedback from their customers yeah. about the product that they are sending out. So I, w I wouldn't say that companies don't want to measure their impact or don't readily measure their impact. I would say that the conversation hasn't been had yet. And an impact-driven business model is a new conversation in this ecosystem. So um, by and large, what we have seen is out of the 2,000 plus companies that are using our tools currently, it shows us already that people are interested in measuring their impact. It is the how that seems to be a challenge and also the conceptualizing the reason for measuring the impact right are you measuring the impact because you want to have a better product or are you trying to pivot like what is your reason for measuring your impact that leads me to another question <laughs> do you think that kenyans sometimes measure impact to get like for an external purpose mm -hmm. so michelle i would say that by and large mm -hmm. i mean even though we want to crowd the issue of profit <laughs> so it's that true. it seems that we are all philanthropic. Yes. At the end of the day, we have to make money and nobody wants to run a business that is not profitable. Yeah. So, so let's say, yes, we measure our impact so that we make good decisions for our organization. And why do we want to make good decisions? Because we want to grow the organization and we want the organization to run more efficiently so that our bottom line improves. But then what happens when our bottom line improves? We expand, we hire more people, we solve more societal problems, okay. and then the cycle continues. So it is a good thing for businesses globally to want to measure their impact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so can you tell us what it entails? You did mention about the B Corp certification. Yes. Can you tell us what the process is and its role in retaining yes. talent and attracting investment? So the B Corp certification is a mark. It's actually a circle with a B saying this organization or this company is B certified. Yeah. B Corp certification is only given to private businesses that are profit making, uh -huh. not NGOs. Although B Lab is a not for profit, um, we are here to support and create an enabling environment for businesses to become certified. Sure. The systems change that we are trying to drive is to say that we don't have to wait for governments to come and solve poverty, solve the issue of, of unemployment, solve all these issues that the citizens are having. Meanwhile, the private sector is over 80% of the economy, you see. Yeah. So we need to hold accountable the private sector as well. So if you are in the private sector, and majority of your employees are making 15,000 shillings, which is the minimum wage. And you as a CEO are taking home 200 million a year. That's a problem. Yeah. Right. So we are saying you can evenly distribute or distribute your pay, pay people a living wage mm -hmm. where they don't have to be indebted yeah. just to live a normal life. They can afford health care, they can afford basic education, they can afford to feed themselves, they can afford transport. They have a good wage that they can live. And even you at the top, yeah. you also have a good wage that you can live and everyone is happy. Mm -hmm. So in the B Corp certification process, an organization first makes the decision at the board level to become certified. And the decision they've really made is that as an organization, we have chosen a different path to consider all our stakeholders in our business as we go about our normal activities, right? So then the first step will be they go to the B Impact Assessment Tool and answer the questions. This is an assessment tool that checks to see whether you qualify for B Corp certification and it measures you um, and compares you amongst like kind businesses in your industry. Once you complete that assessment, you and have a score of 80 
or above, you can submit your assessment for third party verification because of course we have to verify your answers. Once you submit, you pay a submission fee um, that shows that you are committed to the process. Then uh, the standards team, which is currently based um, in Europe and in the U US and part of it in, in um, South America mm -hmm. will go through your assessment, right? To make sure that um, the, the answers that you have given are true. They will ask you for supporting documentation to prove this impact that you're saying. They might ask you for policies to back up the policies that you're saying that you have. They have they'll ask you different questions and it's random selection. So once you pass this verification process, currently it takes about six months to twelve months yeah. to do that. Yeah. Then you um, you are now invited to become B certified and you become B certified after you pay the certification fee. Mm. The certification on our continent ranges from $300 and ab a year and above. And your certification is, is renewed every year. Um, but every third year you have to come back and take the assessment again okay. before you renew, because we have to make sure that whatever you said you were doing three years ago, you're still doing it now. So you, you have to recertify mm. after three years. And I also want to ask you, apart from the B certification helping in retaining talent, mm -hmm. how else does it help the organization grow? So yes, yeah, so your question is around what is the value of certification, especially for businesses in the continent. So I will start with the one you, you raised earlier <laughs> about, about talent, mm -hmm. right? So increasingly, especially during the time of the pandemic people have started thinking about what what type of organization do i want to work for um people are shunning toxicity speaking out against those kinds of things so when you work for a big corporation um, you know that this is an organization that is committed to you as an employee to, to committed to your well-being as a whole some b corps even offer um, their employees stocks and shares in the business so that they grow together with the organization so so you retain you attract a specific talent as a b corp because that mark already sets you apart right so that's one the other thing that we are seeing is that there's a, a wave of impact investments on the continent and so many um, private equity firms or private investors are looking for businesses that have a proven impact to invest in. Mm -hmm. And this is because they don't just want to say that, oh, I'm investing in a profit making business and I'm making X amount of money, but I want to invest in a business that is having a positive impact wherever they are operating. And what better than to choose a B certified business that not only have we measured yeah. the impact they're having, we have verified the impact and we have put a stamp on it. So there's that. Um, also, the networking is priceless. We do have internal databases where you can connect with over 4,000 B Corps globally. So think about if you are in manufacturing now and you're trying to get your produce out there, whether you're trying to get it to Latin America or to Europe or to Asia, you have a network where you can go in and see which business you can collaborate, where you can export your products to. Um, there's hardly other associations that allow for those um, types of one-on-one -on -one conversations to happen, right? So, so there's that access to markets. There's there's networking also as a benefit. There's there are so many. I can I can spend a lot of time. It's okay. Saying, yes. And then I'd like to ask you. Uh, so, what creates a differentiator? Um, as concerns organizational output when it comes to talent retention between B certified organizations and those that are not. And um, do employees in these organizations and stakeholders experience a paradigm shift in the outlook? I would say increasingly people want to work for organizations that make a difference. And working for an organization that espouses those same values keeps for employee retention. So you would want to stay there longer because you are heard, you're comfortable, you know that your work is having an impact beyond yourself, right? So you're more likely to stay with that organization and grow with that organization because of the outside impact and because of the movement that, it's, it, that you belong to. One of the other plus sides of being 
in the B Corp movement is the collective actions. So globally, um, we do take collective action on certain issues. Um, so for example, right now, climate action is one of the things that we have adopted on this continent, yeah. where we, we actually have a climate toolkit that we can give to organizations to say, follow these steps or join the conversation or join us in these different initiatives that we are doing regarding sustainability, right? The other uh, collective action, which we picked um, earlier, uh, this year or even sometimes last year um, but we finally got funding for the project this year is the issue about inclusivity in the workplace diversity and inclusivity in the workplace which is why we are doing the program on incorporating persons with disability and the youth into the business and women into the because there are so many um, you hear so many complaints from employers to say uh, these millennials are difficult, these youth, we can't retain them, we, it's difficult, we, could, we don't know what they want. So having that conversation with experts to say, okay, this is how you retain youth. This is the process for hiring a person with disabilities because somebody's, you know, some of the B Corps even say, we don't know where to find these people. We want to hire them, but we don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. So these conversations are conversations that we have so that we can encourage the type of environment that allows employees to come and to stay. So we were able to see certain trends like more women hired, more women at executive levels, um, more a growth in, in em the number of employees. Um, but of course, those numbers don't tell us about attrition. Yeah, yeah, true. And so with that said, I'd also like to ask you, do you think Kenyan organizations are being compliant with uh, sustainable development goals? My response to that is that we have seen more conversation around how organizations can get involved. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, the SDGs, have been touted, they have been spoken about. A lot of companies don't know how to plug in or how it applies to them. Yes. Um, but I would say that because of the interest we are seeing mm. in conversations and attendance in conversations about sustainability, I would virtue to say that yes, Kenyan companies are thinking about sustainability. When we launched the SDG Action Manager just in the African continent, in 2021, we had over 700 companies who had registered onto the platform. That tells me that this is a conversation that companies want to have. Um, further to that, we launched um, a program in partnership with APSA Bank and Strathmore University to pilot a training, actually a whole course on sustainability for APSA suppliers. Wow. And in this course, the, the companies are learning how to practically, firstly, they are learning about the SDGs and then how to embed it in their business, how to communicate about the SDGs and then how to use the SDG Action Manager tool to measure their impact and over 200 businesses have already gone through that program wow. and in just one year? to get in one year in one wow. year and just to add on to the impact of that program it's not just that the, the companies have done the program and yes. graduated is the fact that Strathmore has been able to connect them with interns to come to their organization and say, okay, yes, you identified these goals. Yes, these are the things that you wanted to do. And maybe you don't have the staff. Here are interns who we've also trained on how to use the tool, where you can absorb them into your organization and they can help you implement. Wow, wow. That's impressive. Totally impressive. Now let's go to COVID. Yes. COVID hit hard, especially for many players in the entrepreneurship space. What were you able to do as Bila East Africa? Well, I would say even as an organization, B-Lab itself got hit, right? <laughs> true, true, true. Because, because how, I mean, how many people are thinking I need to pay my certification fee or I need to survive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I would say as B-Lab, mm -hmm. the interesting thing is we had a surge in businesses that wanted to become certified. Wow. 
in 2020, How in 2021, and, and globally, we were all surprised. This is why our lag time now for certification is longer because there are more businesses in the, in the pipeline. So, of course, we had to give businesses concession, like the ones who um, had to pay certification fees. We gave them a, a, a period, a grace period, um, within which they can pay we also those who are supposed to recertify we also gave them a grace period we were also um, able to do some some workshops around business sustainability around this period to help our b corps to start thinking differently about positioning during this period isn't it yeah. but um in i feel mm -hmm. that you know when you started when we when we started seeing images of like India where this is this is the fog when all of us were home how how <laughs> the, how clear the skies were when all of us were home <laughs> and how it was before i think even though it affected us on an individual level yes. at company levels there was a lot of reflection yeah that was going on about what are my business practices why is my business here what can I do differently? Or even the conviction mm. to do better, mm. right? And so in that time period, also the fact that there was a decrease in activity, yeah. people had, some of them had more time to finish doing the assessment mm. and to reflect on their businesses, you know, during that time. And then make the decision that I want to become certified because I don't want to be an ordinary business. Sure. Because COVID has shown mm -hmm. Um, how yes. me being aloof yes. doesn't help. So, and I want to plug in, right? Yeah. So, I want to, to take a stance to do my business differently. And so, what's a better way to do that than to become a B Corp? True. And then the last question, I'd like to ask you, what are your hopes when it comes to companies in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, becoming socially impactful organizations? Well, my final hope, of course, is that most businesses, if not all of them, get on the path to sustainability for their survival, but also for the survival of the, the, the coming generation, not the previous one. Um, I also want to recognize, though, that having been an entrepreneur myself, yes. I feel that businesses, especially businesses in Kenya, yes. are are going through a turbulent a phase of turbulence right. and this is how I, I describe it where you can't predict what the environment will be in the future and you can argue that that's how business is for the most part but i feel like government can do better in supporting especially smes or and the private sector in general yeah. i mean i'm in kepsa I sit on some of the boards. There's still the issue of VAT refunds. There are manufacturing firms that are on the brink of, of closing down mm -hmm. because their money is held up in KRE. Yeah. That's not fair for the business. How do they expect the private sector to thrive without government support? Government needs to enable the businesses to work. We can't wake up one morning, all of a sudden, our NHIF fees are this much higher. Yes, 8,000. You know, which we haven't budgeted for and we haven't planned for. And we are high, we, you know, we are hiring based on all of that. So all these things that that I feel that government needs to work better yes. to stabilize the environment for the SMEs, make access to finance more affordable, curb in those punitive loan sharks that are out yeah. there who and, and i know that conversations are already happening around this so that when businesses are thriving then they can start thinking about okay i can pay people better yeah i can provide these other benefits yeah. to my employees b corp certification doesn't become a luxury now yeah. it becomes something that that, that you as a business are proud to showcase and you're not being constrained yeah. to do that, right? You can be certified, you can maintain your certification and you can do your business differently, knowing that at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Queen. We appreciate having you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> we enjoyed as well. Want to be featured on the Member Spotlight? Reach out to us via communications at asic.ke and let us tell your story.